So from here, then we we turned our attention to, you know, what would be the cost to make a humanoid bot, and Scott Walter and others did some good work on this, and we got down into the range of you know eight to ten thousand dollars per per humanoid, which was interesting because on a weight basis, uh, Optimus is about three percent of the Model Three, on a battery pack weight basis, it's about three percent, and the, and certainly the, you know, the overall weight. But the cost is probably about twenty-five to thirty to thirty-five percent of a Model Three. So still, you know, it's much higher than three percent of the Model Three's cost. There's also going to be some complexity in terms of, you know, the hands. Um, can they make enough actuators to be able to scale this up? There's there's still a few unanswered questions here. But there's no really crazy sort of manufacturing complexity that's going to hold them back once they really start to make humanoid bots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I think, um, you know, this is a fantastic analysis because thank you guys for actually breaking it down to component costs. I think the only consideration, right, is that many of these things are not off the shelf, right? Tesla, mm -hmm. Elon has said that so many times. They had to invent them, had to create yep. them. They're just bespoke to this particular product. And so that that's why the, you know, the R&D costs, the, the initial, you know, design, you know, it's all done by hand. It's going to be incredibly expensive, 300000 per bot. And then that's why it'll take time for them to finally get it down to these actual costs. But the point being that they're small, simple, simple things. It's just, but it's more intricate of how to put together like a yeah. cell phone. And it just takes time for them to figure this out. Well, and speaking of cell phones, on the next page, um, there's a chart here that shows the ramp in Apple iPhone shipments from 2007 when the phone was introduced. So in that first okay. year, yeah. They produced uh, 3.7 million of them. Mm -hmm. And then they ramped up to 13 million, and then 25, and then 50, and then almost 100. Mm -hmm. So Apple ramped up the production of smartphones pretty quickly. And then they got to a point where they were producing a couple hundred million, a bit more than that. And that, that was enough. My conclusion in looking at all this is the industry will produce enough at some point. They'll get to enough capacity at some point to meet the demand that's there. Now, it may take seven or eight years may take 10 years but that's that's still a very quick ramp and it's likely to be fairly quick in the humanoid bot space as well um in the auto industry the largest automakers make 10 to 11 million vehicles a year the whole industry makes between let's say 70 and 90 million vehicles um you know again that the industry makes enough vehicles to meet the demand the cell phone industry makes enough phones to meet the demand and the humanoid bot industry will make enough to meet the demand so I'm not really too worried about production constraints. Maybe in the early years, maybe there's some issues, but they'll get through that fairly quickly. Well, this didn't actually answer the question, how many bots will be made each year? Well, the answer is as many as there's demand for. I'm confident the industry will be able to scale up and produce enough. There's just not really any constraint on that other than just being able to, you know, ramp up the manufacturing over time. Mm -hmm. um, I think you need to <laughs> forecast it. Do your best. Yeah, Show I, me one of these things. I think for me, the, the forecast, the better way to look at it is maybe from the demand side. Mm -hmm. um, and very quickly there, you can get to some big numbers because the demand for labor unlimited. is, is mm -hmm. unlimited. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, I'd love you to do something like this that you kind of had to make guesses on skill set. What, how long will it take for it? Like you did earlier to different kinds of skills, different kinds of industries that I'll be able to replace. And then the capabilities of which manufacturers can build, how fast can they do it? Mm -hmm. I've been pointing out that, of course, Tesla, they've already told you what their, their ramp up is in the next years. But it's unclear which of the other uh, robot makers can do the same thing. And if they partner with Magna, for example, in kind of an auto supply factory, can they also produce this at some point, right? But it might take them a, little, a year later. We'll see. It would be nice to forecast it. Yeah, my personal belief is there'll be a number of fairly large humanoid robot makers, at least in the first decade or two, and then there may be a longer term shakeout. So we've also explored the transformation to Tesla's business and what this means for them, right? And some of our viewers will recognize some of the next slides, but we'll just go through them quickly just to set the stage here. So the next one, Herbert, is uh, breaking out some of uh, Tesla's uh, products and what the potential profit picture is in terms of vehicles. So right now, the top line there are autos. 
Tesla might sell a vehicle, let's say, for $45,000, and they might make a profit, let's say, of $4,500. Now, the vehicle might be replaced in five years, so the profit over a five-year period is $4,500. Now, this excludes any sales and this excludes any services and supercharging, just, just the sale of the vehicle. I, I recognize mm -hmm. Tesla may make additional money on other things, but just focusing on the vehicle. So versus autos, that's one, because we're comparing it against itself. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at the semi. We don't yet know exactly what the semi will sell for. Let's say it's $250,000. Okay. And when we, when we look at the size of the battery pack versus an auto, um, it's much larger battery pack, obviously. So in terms of autos, the profit equivalent over a five-year period is about half. Now, there's a good reason to do semi because of its environmental impact. It accounts for about 1% of the vehicles in the United States, but about 30 some percent of the emissions. So the semi is a very important product just from that standpoint. Not to mention the autonomous opportunity with semi, which is not on this chart. Let's go to the third line. If you add autos with supervised FSD, just as a, you know, a safety enhancer, now you're essentially doubling the profit of the vehicle over that five-year period. Okay, so it's 2x. So just even, even that is, is a big change to Tesla's business model. And then we add an energy. Okay, you sell these megapack systems for say a million dollars a piece, factor in the battery size, factor in what that is in per vehicle equivalents, it's about two and a half to three times the profit opportunity of selling a car. So that's a very attractive business with a long growth runway ahead of it, okay? And that excludes the AI opportunity in energy with, with auto bidder. So it's even higher than that potentially. All right, now we get to the exciting part. Now we've got CyberCab, we've got RoboTaxi. And in that one, you, you're taking a one-time revenue every five years and turning it into recurring revenue every year, right? The battery content of those vehicles, let's say is about half of other Teslas. And the profit equivalent, you know, per, per vehicle now is about 25 times, 26 times just selling mm -hmm. a car. Mm -hmm. So no wonder people are very excited about autonomy and for good reason, right? This is what ARC has based their, you know, fairly high price target on is the robotaxi opportunity. But let's now look at bots. Even if the recurring revenue per unit is $10,000, <laughs> which is far yeah. lower. That's so low. Mm -hmm. Right. The vehicle equivalent is for every vehicle, it's about 30 to 33 bots. And so the profit opportunity in vehicle equivalents is about 250 times just selling one car. If the revenue per bot is only 10,000. This is per now, bot? This is just overall, just on a vehicle equivalence, not, not a per bot basis, but vehicle equivalence. Right, because of the of the the batteries, there's only two point five kilowatt hours or two point three kilowatt hours of batteries oh, in the gotcha. bot. So it's yeah. equivalent to about thirty two vehicles. Mm -hmm. Okay. 